Today on the CTV News at 5, two pedestrians crossing the street in crosswalks are killed within an hour of each other in separate accidents. Plus, a man is in ICU in a Calgary hospital after a Lethbridge house fire. And it's a must-win situation for the Hurricanes tonight against the Tigers. CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Lethbridge Regional Police continue to investigate two fatal pedestrian collisions that happened within an hour of each other. Both victims were using pedestrian crosswalks, and police say that speed and alcohol weren't factors. It may be several days before investigators determine if charges will be laid, but in light of the mishaps, police are urging the public to be more aware of traffic and pedestrian safety. Terry Vogt reports. It's a horrific start to a new year. Police respond to two fatal pedestrian collisions in just over an hour. The first on a residential street in North Lethbridge. A woman is struck by a Jeep while crossing St. Edward Boulevard at St. David Road. The pedestrian, identified as 57-year-old Marilyn Pratt, is pronounced dead at the scene. The Jeep was driven by a 39-year-old man Police are still investigating whether glare from the setting sun was a factor. It's a marked crosswalk only with signs. Uh, it's no overhead lights or anything like that. Um, but uh, as far as the uh, lighting conditions, that is a factor that the police that we are investigating. Officers were still at the scene when another call came in. The second pedestrian was hit by a vehicle only 12 blocks away at a crosswalk on 13th Street North. Police say a Ford truck was making a left-hand turn from 6th Avenue when it struck the pedestrian in the intersection. The victim, 64-year-old Patricia Diane Matthews, died later in hospital. Charges are now pending against the 73-year-old man who was driving the truck. Last year in Lethbridge, three people were killed in pedestrian collisions. Yesterday, there were two fatalities in just over an hour. Police are now urging both drivers and pedestrians to be aware of traffic safety. And our message is always the same, is that drivers ha always have to be aware of uh, who is using the roadways beyond vehicles. It's uh, bicycles, it's pedestrians crossing the road. But the responsibility also is on pedestrians to be aware of uh, whether or not drivers have actually got eye contact with them. When you get struck by a vehicle, whether or not you're in the right is irrelevant. Police say the drivers weren't speeding and alcohol was not a factor in either collision. The investigations are ongoing. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. Police tell us the last time they responded to two pedestrian fatalities so close, close together was 1996. Now, Elk Valley RCMP believe that they have a case of a pedestrian being hit by a vehicle too, but they're going to the public for help. In the early morning hours of December 30th, a man was discovered in downtown Fernie with serious injuries. He remembers walking in the area before he was hit, but he doesn't recall anything else. RCMP believe that he may be the victim of a hit and run. If you have any information, please contact Elk Valley RCMP or Crime Stoppers. Well, Dory, when we were talking earlier today, you actually used the term roller coaster ride about the forecast. Yeah, uh, and the roller coaster ride starts Monday and it continues into Tuesday. We've got uh, snow on the way and it'll start Monday. Big system off the coast. We can't even see it on the maps. It's so far out in the Pacific right now. It's heading our way. So we're looking at snow, periods of snow, on Tuesday. Thanks, Dory. Well, the sole survivor of the Claire's home murder suicide is slowly improving in hospital. Shana Conway's father sent us this photo of her getting some air with friends and family outside the Foothills Hospital in Calgary earlier this week. Shana has been able, has been moved to the rehab floor where she, she will undergo four hours of physiotherapy a day. It's not clear when she might be released from hospital, but family and friends say that she intends to attend the memorial for the, for the three friends that she lost in Lethbridge on January 14th. Donations to her trust fund can be made at any TD Canada branch. The friends have been able to go up and see her now and uh, see that the recovery is, is coming along. Uh, mobility is still you know, somewhat restricted, but there's, uh, there's positive things. I've been able to talk to her father a couple of times, and, and he's real optimistic about her recovery so far. 
I mean, there's always the hope that she's going to be able to make it down to the thing, but our focus right now is on her recovery, not on, you know, whether she can attend this or not attend it. She has indicated she wants to, though, right? Uh, it, she definitely would. Her heart will be here for sure. Whether she's able to physically be here, I think we have to play that by ear right up to that date. Meanwhile, a Texas man was convicted in Lethbridge court today in connection with the seizure of handguns and rifles at the Coots border crossing. The judge found William Arthur Wakeman guilty of six counts, including importing illegal firearms and having loaded firearms. Wakeman was arrested November 1st after customs officers found a restricted firearm in his vehicle. Following a search, they seized four loaded handguns, five rifles, a number of high-capacity magazines and pepper spray. The items total more than $17,000. They will be destroyed and Wakeman must pay a $1,500 fine. And a Lethbridge man will spend the next eight years behind bars after a violent crime spree that lasted last month. 22-year-old Kenneth Gray Allen was convicted of robbing two women outside their north side apartment and trying to stab one of the women who was pregnant. Police say he later robbed a taxi driver at night point. Allen had just been released on probation after serving part of a five-year sentence for robbery. An 18-month prison sentence has been handed down to a 21-year-old woman after being robbed, after robbing rather an elderly woman and stealing from several city stores over the course of several months last year. J. Tiffany Little pleaded guilty to robbing an 88-year-old woman of her wallet and credit cards in August and a number of charges related to stealing from a number of stores. A 21-year-old Sparwood resident is facing child pornography charges after months of a complex investigation by Elk Valley RCMP. Officers searched a Sparwood home Thursday and uncovered a large amount of computer equipment and electronic storage devices. The person's name hasn't been released. Well, one man remains in Calgary's intensive care unit after a house fire in Lethbridge around 11. Wednesday morning, fire broke out in a house in the 1000 block of Lakeway Boulevard South. The man was in the basement where the blaze started. The fire caused extensive heat and smoke damage to the entire house. The initial damage estimate is $200,000. Lethbridge investigators consider the fire suspicious and say police are involved in the investigation. Well, a Nanton animal rescue operator is devastated tonight that her property was the epicenter of Wednesday's grass fire. Today, she tried to pick up the pieces after losing more than 60 animals. Wow. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get to them. They did not, when they needed me the most, I wasn't there for them. That's what hurts the most. Heather Hazen was home to her grandson during Wednesday's windstorm when she says the power poles beside their home started shooting electricity. The fire chief today says it's too soon to blame the wind. John Duesman says the precise rescue of the, the precise cause rather of the fire is still under investigation. Hazen says the electrical current charged her entire mobile home, started it on fire and within minutes there was nothing left. She escaped with her grandson, their dog and 62 cats in a second perished. Who do you save, right? Who do you, who do you, who do you grab? Who do you take? So the only thing we could do was break windows and pray that they got out. I mean, I was on the floor trying to call them because I couldn't even stand up. There was so much smoke within five minutes. It didn't, it didn't take any time at all, any time. We were, and then the police officers telling us to stop. Now coming up at 6, we'll have more about how the community is pulling together to help those affected by the fires. Residents in the hamlet of Walsh, meanwhile, were more fortunate. There was a large grass fire in that area Wednesday. Crews were able to get it under control before any property was damaged, but the blaze scorched about 9 square kilometers of brush and farmland. Well, a bloody battle is underway between Lethbridge Regional Police, firefighters and the RCMP, but it's not as violent as it sounds. Police, fire, EMS and RCMP officers are in a battle to donate the most blood in the 8th Annual Sirens for Life Blood Challenge. Lethbridge Fire and DMS are the defending champs, so other teams will be out for some friendly revenge as they try to claim the winning title. Canadian Blood Services says the true winners are the recipients of the much-needed blood. Uh, police officers every day see uh, the first-hand results of accidents, of serious injuries, and we watch the emergency services, the health departments, everything else rally to save somebody's life. We're, we're, we're just happy we can be part of this. And after the holidays, everyone's got a million other things on their minds, so blood donations do take a slight 
a dip. So when we do get the help from the emergency services of Lethbridge to help us out and the general public helping them out, it's, it just seems to be a win-win situation for everybody. The challenge runs from January 2nd to the 31st. To donate, you can call Canadian Blood Services at one 888 to donate Now, some good news for Albertans. We were the country's job creation leader for 2011. In December, the number of unemployed Canadians rose slightly to 7.5%, or 1.4 million. Nationally, job creation pretty much tanked in the second half of 2011. But here in Wild Rose Country, we closed out the year with the lowest unemployment in Canada at 4.9%. Unemployment in the Lethbridge Medicine Hat region held steady in December at 4.1. And speaking of numbers, here's a look at the day's markets.